recently a party on the other side of this conservatorship reached out in, in some sinister ways to try to silence some of my activism, to try to make me not mention that person or that person's business. Well, let me tell you something right now because I know you're watching. I will be saying everything you tried to do to me. I am BJ Corville. I am a lawyer licensed to practice law in New Jersey. I recently, just recently, graduated from law school in the University of Pennsylvania Law School class of 2020. And then sort of shortly after that, I took and passed the bar exam, which is the test you have to take to be a lawyer. I'm pleased to inform you that the Board of Bar Examiners has reported to the Supreme Court that you have passed the October Bar Exam. And then I actually started working as a lawyer at a huge law firm in New York. And also, during, you know, the course of the pandemic, I found out, you know, about the fact that Britney Spears was still in a conservatorship because of the pandemic. I did have a lot of free time, and so I kind of became very involved in the Free Britney movement using my legal expertise, you know, from school. I had known about a few ways to interpret cases and I realized there was not anyone in the Free Britney movement at that time really reading the cases and the court filings to people to tell them what was going on. And so I kind of put myself right into that role. And so since about June 2020, I have been um, very heavily involved in the Free Britney movement. Why do you want to do this? I feel compelled to make this video because the person who this video is about is a bully and she has hurt people and terrified people and scared people using the legal system and using her power, connections, and resources. I am making this video because she tried to scare me into silence. And I just need to tell her and the whole rest of the world that not only can I not be scared into silence, but she, her time, her reign of terror, being able to scare people into silence is coming to an end. And if I have to be the first domino that falls to bring down her reign of terror, I'm happy to do that. This all really started in July, 2020. So a bit over a year ago. I became aware that Britney was still in a conservatorship. First, I went to the media. I went just to Google to try and figure out what was going on in Britney's case. And I wasn't really getting any clear answers about the legalities of the case. Immediately, I start doing other research, right, on Google and public databases and trying to figure out really what was going on in the conservatorship. So I really should be studying for the bar exam right now, but I'm too obsessed with this free Britney stuff. So, who do I send this to if I found all the original legal documents? I literally just created this TikTok yesterday. I'm just trying to show y'all that I had actually found some stuff here. I'm pretty sure the last lawyer who tried to help Brittany for free ended up getting a temporary restraining order filed against them, but... I don't really care. I'll have shit else better to do, and she deserves to be free because this is ridiculous. And it really only took me a couple weeks of research to see the name 
Lou Taylor. Buckle up, because this might get confusing. So if you go to the SEC, which is the Securities Exchange Commission of the United States government, and type in Louise Taylor into the Advisor Information section, you'll see that she used to be an investment advisor. You also see that she worked at one firm for nine years called Stonebridge Wealth Management. Some weird stuff has gone on where they have been registered in other states and terminated, and some as recently as this year. And you see that they have filed notices to be registered. So here we see Sweet Jamie Music Inc., which is in good standing in the state of Louisiana. You see the secretary and director are Jamie Lynn Spears, but the other director, president, and treasurer are Lou Taylor. But in 2008, which happens to be the exact same year of the conservatorship, Lynn Spears' name is nowhere to be found, and James P. Spears was listed as president. In the document where they surrender it, look who signs to surrender the right to do business. So Stonebridge Investment Council has three employees, one of whom is Lou Taylor, the executive vice president, according to the SEC. It has $722 million under management, but you'll notice that about $600 million of those dollars came in in 2020. That seemed like a lot to me, so it made me investigate. As we all know, the former conservator of Britney Spears' estate, Andrew Wallet, resigned in 2019. And everyone's been asking, where is all of Britney Spears' money that she made from all of the tours and everything else? Basically, Andrew Wallet moved out of the way, handed over the reins, and all of a sudden, $600 million ended up under Lou Taylor's investment firm. And of course, by this time, I was pretty acquainted with many members of the Free Britney movement, and so they had a lot better idea and knowledge of some of these players than I did. I was brand new, not only to the movement, but even to being a Britney Spears fan. So I had a lot of, you know, friendships develop very early on in the Free Britney movement because I needed help understanding the case, and they needed help understanding the case. So I'm doing a little research here and there, and I, and I put together eventually, with, with many people's help and also just research, that Lou Taylor is, and she was at the time, Britney's business manager. And I don't really know much about Hollywood and managers and things, so I don't really still to this day exactly know what Lou's role was with Britney. But I do know that Lou Taylor's name and her business address for TriStar Sports and Entertainment Group were on dozens of Britney Spears' business filings. 11 Music Circle South, that's TriStar but also 215 Ward Circle Brentwood. It was formerly Stonebridge Investment Council's address and TriStar's address together. It had Brittany touring, see? TriStar Sports and Entertainment, 215 Ward Circle Brentwood, and they had it in Suite 200. They've also listed this as Brittany's house. So in 2013, that address changed to this one. And at the same time, that address changed on Lou Taylor's husband's church. Calvary Chapel used to use this 215 Ward Circle address as their address, right? So, so did Stonebridge, so did TriStar. They just now, in March 2020, purchased the $1.1 million home and they're calling it a church. Yeah. Why are they calling it a church, you might ask? Well, because it's tax exempt. The Securities and Exchange Commission has all kinds of rules for certain types of companies. And they have huge databases where you can look up whether or not certain people have registered with them and things like that, right? So I'm on that website one day in July or August 2020, and I just casually type in Louise Taylor. And sure enough, up pops a search result. Louise Mary Taylor, whose former name was Sawyer, was at the time what appeared to me actively working as an investment advisor. So I immediately began looking into this. Now, I now know that she, she did not actively work as an investment advisor in 2020. She stopped doing that in 2013. But I found out that Lou Taylor worked as a registered investment advisor for a company called Stonebridge Wealth Management. Now, Stonebridge has a couple of nicknames that it goes by, including Stonebridge Investment Council. But Lou Taylor not only worked there as a registered investment advisor, she was also listed as co-owner, founder, and the executive vice president, a director. So it appeared to me that Lou Taylor owned this company and worked as an employee of the company, which is fine, lots of people do that, that's not a problem. But I eventually made the connection that while Lou Taylor was working as Britney Spears' business manager, 
for at least five years. She was also simultaneously working for Stonebridge. Not only was she working as Britney's business manager and as Stonebridge's owner and an investment advisor and all that, but Lou Taylor was also seemingly directing money to come from Britney's estate in the conservatorship and to be handled by this company, Stonebridge. So from where I was sitting, it appeared as though Lou Taylor was self-dealing. She was using her connections to Britney Spears to kind of have her other company be able to handle some of Britney's money, and maybe she was getting double the fees somehow. These are all just speculations, right, I was having back at that time. Then I made another discovery, and the next discovery is not only was Lou Taylor doing all three of those jobs I just described, but during Britney's conservatorship, Lou Taylor's company TriStar was responsible for reporting about Britney's finances to the court for the conservatorship. So from where I was sitting and from what I understand even still to this day, there was really no true oversight as to whether or not what Lou Taylor was doing was ever checked by anyone else, right? Like she was the business manager. She was an investment advisor, it seems, where Britney's money was. So she would be on both sides of that deal. Then she was also the per person responsible for calculating royalties, for coming up with how much percentage she was gonna take. Like Jamie Spears maybe was negotiating some of this, but I mean, really, I would assume, and this is just my common sense thinking at the time, that probably Lou Taylor was a little bit of a mastermind. Now, this is just my opinion. This isn't a fact, but all of those realizations come to light because of me, because I was reading the court document. And then right as I'm making those connections, I was in real time making videos as well. All these things transpire. I've been in the Free Britney movement for like four weeks. <laughs> I made a discovery having to do with Lou Taylor and Stonebridge and all of that, right? 683 million is the amount of assets under management for high net worth individuals. If we're trying to narrow in on where Britney Spears' money is, I think we might wanna look in that category. I'm on that website and I'm typing in Stonebridge Investment Council and I see one of the strangest looking line graphs I've ever seen. As the years go from 2006, seven, you know, 2002, I think is when they started. It's kind of like steady, like climbing a little, but like it's all just like less than 100 million. And then 2009, it kind of has a pretty significant bump, which I thought was interesting considering that was the year after Britney was put into a conservatorship. So the question arose in my mind, hmm, was Britney's money put into this stone bridge during 2009, the first year of her conservatorship? I mean, I don't know. Still to this day, I don't know. I do know some of Britney's money from 2010 was in Stonebridge, but I don't know about 2009. But it was a question that came in my mind. So then when you got to like 2019, you went from like $130 million assets under management and then a line went doom, straight up, just immediately straight up. 500 or $600 million. Now the graph isn't very precise. So it's hard to tell if it's 2019 or 2020 that this line shoots straight up. 130 million all the way up to 700 million all of a sudden. And I was like, where did that money come from? My assumption was that it all came from the same place. And I was like, was this somehow Britney Spears' money? Because all the clues I had at that point were, Lou Taylor doesn't have a lot of oversight. Lou Taylor is, you know, at that point, she was still the business manager. Another clue that we had was that the conservatorship team always claimed Britney was worth around 59 to 61 million dollars. She now has an estate worth 60 million. And that seemed impossible to a lot of people, including myself, because she had been documented on record for like X Factor and all these other things for making an accumulated several hundred million dollars since the conservatorship started. Estimated net worth of 200 million dollars. And so people were like, where is her money? What did they do with all of that money if she's only worth 60 million dollars? And so there was this Money Nation article that was written in 2016 that claimed Britney should be worth in the $600 million area. Putting all those little clues together, I just thought, hmm, is that the missing $600 million? Right in the area that I was making these discoveries, Jamie Lynn Spears files some documents on Britney's conservatorship case. What we end up finding out in those documents filed in August 2020 is that Jamie Lynn Spears had been made trustee of Britney's most valuable trust called the SJB Revocable Trust.
So not only had that happened a couple years ago, we found this out in 2020, but it really had happened in 2018. The other thing that we found out in these filings was that Jamie Lynn Spears, as trustee of this trust, was trying to make a few changes as to how the money in the trust was gonna be dealt with. And long story short, one of the things that Jamie Lynn Spears wanted to do was change the way that it was administered such that there would need to be a kind of investment advisor involved all of a sudden. And wouldn't you know, the investment advisor that Jamie Lynn Spears wanted to put all of the money in Britney's most valuable trust in just so happened to be Stonebridge Investment Council. Of course, what this would mean on the ground is Stonebridge would be able to collect a substantial amount of money in fees each year. I mean, if I'm doing my calculations correctly, between like one to four million dollars in fees for being able to act in this capacity. Now, a lot of questions remain. I don't know if Lou Taylor is still involved with Stonebridge. I don't know, right? All I know is what I just told y'all. Is Lou Taylor still involved with Stonebridge? Who knows? Is it Britney's money? I'm not sure. You know, there's a lot of what ifs. The next month, Lou Taylor resigns as Britney's business manager. Now she had been acting in that capacity for like 12 years, at least 10 years. And the next month after Jamie Lynn makes all these filings to move all this stuff and Stonebridge and all this stuff, Lou Taylor quits as Britney's business manager. No one exactly necessarily knows why. There was all kind of other stuff going on at that time, but I never received a cease and desist. In February, 2021, I officially began working as a lawyer at a law firm in Manhattan. And the name of the law firm is Winston and Strawn LLP. And within the first couple of days of working at the law firm, I just got nervous. I got nervous and I was scared because I felt like I'm making all these connections. I had a feeling that it was possible that those filings were made because of my discovery. I also knew Lou Taylor had sued fans before. This is Jordan Miller, and today in this video, I'm going to be apologizing to Lou Taylor and retracting a story on Breathe Heavy. I know Lou Taylor sues people. Taylor sent me, through her legal counsel, a demand letter stating that if I don't retract the story and retract the claims, that I could be entangled in a legal battle with her. And I'm just starting my first lawyer job ever, right? So I'm also in a lot of student debt. I had just graduated, right? Like I was really depending on this job. Like I had the intention of being there for at least a few years. It's really, it was like a dream come true type of job. And so I didn't want to jeopardize it. And so I also didn't want to stop doing my Free Britney advocacy. I wanted to be able to do both. And so I knew that it would be better if I asked permission up front rather than later down the road maybe Lou Taylor tried to sue me who knows and my work be like well, we didn't even know you were doing this I didn't want to feel like I was keeping it a secret I wanted to do everything correctly and follow the rules and do everything the right way I was being asked to interview for a documentary and I didn't know if I was allowed to so I was like let me just get this all out up front in my first you know couple weeks and just we'll see what you know what happens and we'll go from there I asked my training coordinator what our firm's social media policy was and what the media policy was as for like like appearing in documentaries and stuff like that. And she didn't know. And she was like, to be honest with you, usually our associates aren't being asked to interview for documentaries. So I'll have to ask someone else. And she, she did though, she helped me. And eventually that same conversation had to be had several times until it worked my way all the way up to the general counsel of the law firm. So we ended up talking to this guy and we get on the phone and I'm very nervous because he's really important and I'm brand new. He thought I was working on Britney's case. I was like, no, I'm not working on the case. I explained to him what I had been doing and he thought it was cool. And he was like, well, this doesn't sound controversial to me. You know, just as long as you're not going out there and saying that you're representing the firm, you know, or that you're representing any clients, just say, you know, this is your own opinion. Don't you know, say that it's the firm's opinion or anything like that, but that should be fine. And I said, okay. And he said, yeah, this doesn't sound controversial at all. And like, part of me wanted to just be like, okay, thanks. But part of me just had this gut feeling I needed to full disclosure. And I said, well, controversial part is there's this lady, Lou Taylor. 
She's Britney Spears' former business manager and she is very litigious. She likes to sue people. I just don't want her to come try to interfere with my employment. And the general counsel said, this is the least controversial thing I'm gonna deal with today. And he said, but do make sure you run it through conflicts, make sure she's not a client or whatever. Or, you know, maybe he said he would run it through conflicts. I don't remember exactly, but he gave me like one little caveat, like let's make double sure that she's not a client. And as long as she's not, you know, carry on with what you're doing. And if you're on a documentary, make sure you send me the link. So I was like, this is a dream come true. I'm gonna be able to do my dream job and learn from all these amazing, cool, powerful attorneys. And I'm also gonna be able to still do my free Britney activism without this limitation. And I was really scared, but I was glad that I asked permission because I got permission. You would love if that was the happy ending, <laughs> but. And now we're in May. 2021. And in May, I get an email from that same general counsel who I had spoken with in February. And he says, do I have time to talk? And it's like, you have to make time to talk. You know what I mean? It's not like an option. We end up getting on the phone. I I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember exactly. But he's like, do you remember the conversation we had a few months ago about your free Britney activism? And I said, <laughs> I'm being very respectful, right? Like, yeah, yes. And I'm nervous at this point because I'm like, what's happened? Like, what did Lou Taylor call? Like, I didn't know, but I just had a gut feeling like something wasn't good. Like, I don't think he was calling to like ask for it. Like, are you in a documentary? No, I think it was not good. Like, I, d I was nervous. And I said, yeah, I, rem I remember. And then he was like, have you ever made any videos about a woman named Lou Taylor or a company named TriStar or something like that? He definitely asked me about Lou Taylor. And I said, yeah. Of a lot, a lot of videos, a lot of posts. And he says, well, it's come to my attention that TriStar is now a client of the firm. And I freaked out. I said, oh my God, I knew, I told you about this woman and I knew this was gonna happen. And I said, she's doing this on purpose to silence my activism. And he says, well, no, 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 we don't know that. You wouldn't wanna go making those type of accusations if you don't know that for sure. And I was like, okay, but it kind of seems like it. I've been working here for three months and she's already like miraculous miraculously a client of the firm. I don't believe that. She's coming here on purpose. I'm telling you from my memory, the conversation turned to, this is paraphrasing. Okay, regardless of whether you think she did this on purpose or not or whatever, would you be willing to take down your posts and videos where you mention TriStar or its CEO, Lou Taylor? And I said, no. Cause y'all, my research was around this finances, the business, the, all that. And that is Lou Taylor. You cannot take one step in any direction of this conservatorship without finding her. Whether it be the, the entertainment side, the business side, the finances, the accounting, the CPA, the invoices, anywhere you go, the investing, you gonna find Lou Taylor. So it's like, that was most of my content did mention her some way, shape or form. And so I said, Larry, you gave me permission in February, explicitly by name to mention her. No conflicts have ever arisen I said, my work, my research is inextricably intertwined with Lou Taylor. I've been acting in reliance upon what you told me three months ago, which was I could make videos about her. So now I have hundreds of hours worth of videos, unduly burdensome. If I have an hour long video and I mention Lou Taylor for 40 seconds, I have to delete the whole video now. And that's because you told me I could make videos about her. And he's like, okay, okay, well, all right, I hear you. Um, Well, what about future videos? Would you be willing to, and refrain from mentioning TriStar in future video. It was all like a bit overwhelming. I was completely blindsided. Now, was I surprised? Truly? No. No, but it was still like a bit disorienting for it to happen. And so I said, I don't know, I have to think about it. And then I said to him, am I allowed to say no? And he kind of says, no. right now it's a request. And then so to me, a request means it's optional, right? And then so the next question I ask him is, what happens if I say no? And he said, well, I actually don't know because no one's ever told me no before. Usually if we ask people to remove something from their social media, they just do. So I don't know. But right now it's just a request. So I'm not telling you to remove anything. And I said, okay, well, I'm gonna think about whether or not I'm willing to refrain from posting about TriStar or Lou Taylor in the future. And in the meantime, can you find out for me if I'm actually really allowed to say no, like, is this gonna interfere with my job? Am I gonna get fired? 
Like I need to know what the consequence is so I can make an informed decision, right? That's a variable that I needed to consider. So we get off the phone and then I call my partner and I said, you will never believe this. Lou Taylor came to my law firm and she's trying to hire my law firm and they're trying to make me take my videos down and they're trying to make me stop talking about her on the internet. And then he's like, what did you tell them? And I said, well, I told them I'm not taking down my videos that I already made because they gave me permission to do that. That's stupid, I'm not doing that. But I told them that I would think about in the future. And then he's like, why? She already knows that you're already making those videos. Like, that's not fair. Why should she get, just get to come over there and make you, even if, and I was like, yeah, but they're saying she didn't do it on purpose. Maybe it wasn't on purpose or maybe whatever. And he was like, yeah, but no matter if it was on purpose or not, she, is now at the law firm trying to make you not talk about her when she already know, like you were there first, basically. And I was like, yeah, true. And also like, it's not even a conflict because there's these rules in, in the law, right? When you're a lawyer, you have to follow ethical rules, professional rules, where it's like, there's certain things that are considered to be conflicts of interest. And if you have something like that, it limits your behavior as a lawyer on what you're able to do, for example, right? So. If, if you're giving someone legal advice and they're asking you a question for the purpose of seeking legal advice and you answer the question for the purpose of helping them find answers to their legal advice question, then the communication, whether it be an email or a conversation written or spoken, is considered to be confidential. The lawyer is not supposed to talk about it with other people, right? So that's a true conflict. But in this situation, I never spoke to Lou Taylor. She never relayed any information to me for any purpose other than to shut me up. But at the time I was so scared because I had all these like important, powerful lawyers like the general counsel of the law firm. And now I knew he was about to take my question of what if I say no up to even more powerful people at the law firm on the executive committee or the executive board. And so, you know, three months into my career, my name is already on the lips of people that a lot of people at the law firm never talked to once for any reason. And so it put a huge target on my back, in my opinion, that made me stand out in a bad way from my other peers at the law firm. Basically, I'm talking on the phone to Prim and we were talking about this stuff. And I said, you know what, you're right. Let me call this guy back. I'm gonna tell him that I am gonna keep making my videos because they gave me permission to. There is no conflict. All they have to do is use their fancy computer system and screen me out from being able to look at anything of her files and I won't even be able to find it. That's why they pay so much money for those systems. It's why it exists. So I don't know why I'm being asked these questions and I just like, I don't know, I just, yeah, like got kind of got my arms around it a little bit and I realized like, even if she did not on purpose come to my law firm for the purpose of silencing me, even if she didn't, even if it was a total coincidence, once she was there, she tried to make me stop posting videos about certain content. And that is unethical. That is unethical in my opinion. So we get off the phone, whatever, I call Larry back. And I'm like, okay, Larry, I'm not gonna stop making the videos. So when you're asking the people, whatever you need to ask them, tell them, what if I say no to deleting the videos, which I'm definitely not deleting? And also, what is gonna happen to me and my job at this place if I keep doing what I'm doing? Because I just need to know. And then once I know that, I can make more decisions moving forward. I was just kind of processing in the moment. What I was really thinking was, why is he asking me these questions? Now, at the moment, I thought that Lou Taylor was allegedly supposed to be a client. I'm paraphrasing, but Larry said he had been assured that the $600 million was not Britney Spears' money. He said that the, the person who assured this to him was a reliable source and somebody that Larry would trust. And I was like, well, who? Who is it? And he said, well, it was her lawyers. And then a lot of things passed through my mind, but the first thing that passed through my mind was the last 15 minutes of my life that I spent pretty much defending to Larry that Lou Taylor and Stonebridge were affiliated, right? M my position, they're affiliated. And now he's telling me Lou Taylor's lawyers 
told him the $600 million is not Britney's money. So the first question that comes to my mind is how would they know that? If they're not affiliated, how on earth do Lou Taylor's lawyers know who that money's for? You think if they're not affiliated, Stonebridge is just like, oh yeah, random lawyers for a random person who's not affiliated with us at all. We'll give you access to all the books and records of our company. That doesn't make sense. So I asked him, can you explain to me how, if Lou Taylor and Stonebridge are not affiliated, how Lou Taylor's lawyers has enough access to the books and records of Stonebridge to be able to ascertain whether or not that's Britney Spears' money? And he sort of gets confused and says, oh, oh. Sorry, you lost me. As if it's my logical question that has him lost. How do lawyers for somebody who's not affiliated to this company have knowledge of that company? If they're not affiliated, I'm trying to figure out how Lou Taylor's lawyers would know who the money is for if what you're telling me is true and that's that she's not affiliated with them. So then I said, can you explain to me why my mentor Carrie is here exactly because and then I said like is this conversation being recorded and he laughs at me and at that point I just kind of break down in tears and I just felt so ganged up on and duped and like a total foreigner like a total stranger in this world and there were all of these really strange unwritten rules no one ever actually tells you and you're supposed to just know or figure out on your own. And it was like, people were always like scoffing at me and laughing at me. Like something was funny when I was asking questions and I was like, I am sorry, I don't know how all of this works. I have been a lawyer for literally three months. I have worked at this job for three months and now for weeks I've been worrying about this. I don't know where you're getting your information. I don't know why you're asking me these questions and I just lost it. And then after I like sort of calmed down a little bit, the conversation turns to Larry's next request. Remember now, nobody still never ever told me what's gonna happen if I say no. They just kept giving me these vague answers, these vague things like, well, we're not telling you you have to delete it. He says, forget about TriStar. Forget about never posting about Lou Taylor. Would you be willing in the future moving forward to stop posting about Stonebridge and the 600 million. And I said, Larry, is Stonebridge our client? He said, no, TriStar would be the client. I said, okay. And you told me that Lou Taylor is not right now affiliated with Stonebridge, right? And he said, that's what I was told. Can you explain to me why it is you were asking me not to talk about this topic when it is not our client and it is according to you not even affiliated with our client why am i being asked not to talk about something that's that's not our client it's not affiliated with our client like even if it was our client i should be able to talk about it that's my position i just want to let that be clear and what he said was well you're implying that they're affiliated and you're implying that it's the 600 million is britney spears's you wouldn't want to be saying something that isn't true and we've been told that it's not Britney's money. And so for you to be implying that it even could be, you know, it's the firm's position that you shouldn't be doing that because the firm knows that it's not true. And you can't be implying something that the firm knows isn't true. I've never heard that before, but that's what he told me. Okay, Larry, how about this? What if, would you be willing to share with me the evidence you saw that proved to you and the firm that it's not Britney Spears' money. If you show that to me, I will sign a confidentiality waiver and I will never talk about it. And if it's compelling evidence that it's not Britney's, I will make a video and tell people, I know it's not Britney's money. I will make a video, I will delete any and all references. I said, if you would just show me the evidence that you saw that made you think that it was not Britney's money. And he told me, well, I didn't see any evidence. It's, you know, I was told. But I don't want you to think it was like, oh, Lou Taylor told me. I've never spoken to her. I don't know Lou Taylor, he said. But it was, you know, lawyers from a reputable firm. He said, well, BJ, you're a lawyer. Would you ever lie for a client about something like that? And I said, 
Well, Larry, if I was complicit in a multi-hundred million dollar criminal conspiracy, yeah, I might probably try, I might try to cover up my crimes. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, but just, you know, I was just telling him, like, it's hard for me to really wrap my mind around it. I said, but what I will tell you, Larry, is lawyers in this case have already lied. There are court documents that say Britney Spears had dementia when she was 26 years old. And they never to this day ever submitted any capacity declaration from any doctor saying that Britney had dementia. So as far as I'm concerned, lawyers in this case have already lied to the court under penalty of perjury. So if your sources are Lou Taylor and or her lawyers, I'm sorry, that is not compelling to me. I said, and if their story and their allegation is that I'm lying, then they should sue me. And then I will request discovery and we'll go to deposition and I will be able to figure out who's lying and who's not lying. But there's systems for them sorting out if I'm lying or not, and it's not going through my employer. But sitting here today, frankly, it's insulting that Lou Taylor thought that there was any chance that she was gonna be able to silence me through that route. And in fact, she figured it out probably in not that much longer than 15 seconds because it wasn't very much longer after that. I wasn't even being told she was a client anymore. I think she probably, this is speculation, no one told me this, she probably went to the firm, which is a sports law firm. She probably went dangling her client roster in front of my firm. But I think once the firm kind of heard my side of the story and realized that a lot of her sides of the story actually in fact were not adding up and it is kind of weird if she doesn't have an affiliation with this company, why would she, like my questions made sense, at least enough to the extent that they could not answer them. What I was told is the continued relationship was no longer tenable due to the circumstances, which is super vague and I don't know what that means. I never heard any confidential communications. I never spoke to or saw Lou Taylor or worked on any matter for TriStar Sports and Entertainment. It was a pure, sheer bullying tactic. The big reason I'm making this video is because I know for a fact Lou Taylor and TriStar Sports and Entertainment and her gaggle of lawyers have done this to other people. And so many people, dozens, maybe hundreds, are just waiting for somebody to be the first person to say it, and I will, because after Lou Taylor was no longer a client, I still had the question, what if I say no? And no one still ever answered it. What I think she probably thought was, BJ probably cares more about this job than the Free Britney movement. Not true. Lou Taylor miscalculated whenever she imposed herself into my personal and professional life. Even if it were the case that I wouldn't be able to pay my bills or my student loans or my any of that, I still would have made the same decision because it's the right thing to do. It, it felt emotionally like I was mourning or grieving the loss. And I was. I was grieving the loss of sort of what I thought my future was going to be because three months into my career, I was faced with a question that made me confront kind of who I actually am. I knew that if I stopped making the videos about Lou, I would be sacrificing a part of who I am. I would be betraying who I am for my job, for a paycheck, or you know, just for any reason, but because someone else told me to and wanted me to, not because I wanted to. And I realized I was going to be faced with those types of decisions regularly. I am never going to have to look back on any time in my career where I made a decision that went against my integrity. The reason all of these abuses were able to happen to Britney Spears, why weren't people speaking up? Why weren't, there's doctors involved, lawyers, judges. All you're telling me all those people are involved and not one lawyer, judge, doctor, hospital ever said this is wrong and blew the whistle? And you know what? It's kind of a valid question. But now I know the answer to that question. They don't speak up because they're extorted, blackmailed, frightened, scared, and a lot of people do have to confront whether or not they're gonna feed themselves or face, you know, a lawsuit from a person like Lou Taylor, or isn't it easier to just bow out? And you know what, I already lost everything that Lou Taylor can try to take from me. You have to tell the story, because right now people are saying there's lawyers, there's dancers, there's all these people involved. 
no one ever said anything and look now people are coming forward and look how much more seriously why do i have to hide this like a hush hush secret away in the dark it's the era of the whistleblower it's time to say everything what they did to you in those first weeks especially whenever it was unclear whether or not my job was gonna force me to stop talking about her. I didn't know and I wasn't getting any clear answers from them. And so sitting in that uncertainty was one of the hardest things I've ever done. I mean, I was off social media as that surprise witness for like a month. And in that time, I became afraid for my life and had a lot of people at the time like messaging me and telling me, you know, through my other personal accounts, like they supported me and stuff, but it just felt very like lonely and isolating. And it was like in that time that I really understood how Lou and other bad actors have silenced people. And I had to think, you know, like I have all this debt all this debt i had to really confront what's going on here is not okay because the whole thing boiled down to like they were trying to act at work like it was some kind of conflict of interest they were trying to act like lou taylor was already our client because i never saw lou taylor's signed engagement letter corporate america believed that because they were paying me two hundred thousand dollars a year base salary that they were gonna have the opportunity and the entitlement to tell me what the fuck i was able to say and do in my off time and to be honest i really didn't have any off time so they kind of were right i was working all the time and so all that shit kind of culminates and then you just realize like if i don't take a stand here i'm gonna become another cog in this machine and there's gonna be little baby that surprise witnesses coming up who i'm gonna be their mentor and they're gonna be like well she did it so i guess i have to do it too and I just feel like I just wasn't made for that. I just wasn't put on this earth for that reason. I just very strongly feel called to just not do illogical and immoral shit for money. Lou Taylor clearly miscalculated because she thought I was that type of person that I would just sacrifice my integrity for money. The email says, hi, Deborah. I have attempted to email Larry, that's the general counsel, a few times, but I've not received a response. Please let this message serve as my formal resignation from Winston and Strawn. I'm too traumatized by the experience I had to be able to return to work. Every time I open my Winston laptop, I have panic attacks. I think my talents will be better utilized and appreciated elsewhere once I'm able to recover from this terrible experience. Please do let me know how I should proceed in forwarding my laptop and charger back to the appropriate person. Thank you for your assistance during this very troubling and upsetting process. Best regards. How are you feeling? It's like almost just like been hanging over my head anyway. And it's like, I just want to have it be over with. So there it is.